My Lord. And I can empathize with you. But you know, the Lord created each and every one of us to be unique. But this is the MTV generation. Real house. Hmm? The age of reality television. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? Hmm? Maybe I'm losing my mind. Maybe I'm just talking to myself. But, uh, but I know what you're going through. And I know it's not easy to admit that maybe you feel a little isolated. Maybe you might feel a little rejected. Maybe you aren't the most popular person in school or in your neighborhood. But I came by to tell you tonight, there is one who knows exactly where you are. Hmm? And he hears your cry. He's longing to reach out to you. He wants to reach you. He wants to take you. He wants to take you from being part of the crowd into becoming someone who can lead the crowd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to be like the world tells you to be. You can be yourself. You don't have to get a bunch of tattoos to be cool. (laughs) Yeah, but my youth pastor has really cool tattoos. Well, tell him to repent. Oh, hallelujah. Huh? Mm, mm, mm. And David found himself growing up in a world that was gone crazy. And the Bible tells us that God moved upon the prophet Samuel's heart and he began to cry. He cried because of the way society had become. And God said, how long are you going to cry? We just read it. How long will you weep for Saul? He said, fill your horn with oil and go. The failure of the church in this hour, the failure of our generation has been to bring to you the revival of Almighty God. You don't even know what it is. Where the power of God falls, the fire of God falls, it convicts you. It changes you. He fills you. He, he empowers you. He anoints you. He calls you to something greater, something higher. He takes your old life and gives you a new life. Somebody here tonight, somebody help me out, please. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. But we fail to give you what rightfully belongs to you. But my Bible tells me <laughs> that in the last days, God is pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh. And it's not the old people that He's pouring His Spirit out upon. The Bible says He's pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters are going to become a prophetic generation that will herald the coming of Almighty God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! My Lord, my Lord, how long will you weep for Saul, Samuel? It's time to stop crying. God has waited too long for the older generation to get their act together. I'm telling you and I'm prophesying to you that a mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God is coming to your generation. He's going to come upon you. He's going to empower you. He's going to call you. To rise up and do something with your life. To make a significant impact in this world. Well, you don't... I'm just a young guy. What do I... Who am I? (laughs) David was a young person. Hmm? The Bible tells me that Samuel came to Jesse's house. The prophet of God. Full of the power of God. When he came into the city, the city began to shake. He was God's prophet. The elders came to him and said, have you come in peace? They were afraid of him. He came to Jesse's house. And he told Jesse, God has provided a king 
from among your sons. You are the kings. You are the daughters of God. You are the army of God. But something happened. Samuel came to Jesse's house, man. And uh, he told Jesse, he said, you know, uh, God has sent me to your house and, and he's about to provide a king for the nation of Israel from among your sons. Am I boring you? All right. So let me know. I'll turn it over to you so you can preach. <laughs> Something interesting in this story. The Bible says that Jesse began to make his sons pass before the prophet. We just read it. Starting with the oldest. He came in, flexing his six-pack abs, <laughs> flashing his pearly whites. Surely... This is the anointed of the Lord. But the Lord spoke to Samuel and said, Nah, this isn't him. Hmm? The next one came by and the next one came by. Until seven sons passed before the prophet. And God said, Not one of these boys is the one that I've called. God would tell Samuel, don't look on the outside. Hmm? For God does not look on the outside. God looks upon the heart. Hmm? See, Saul was the biggest dude in all of Israel. When Saul was anointed. The Bible says he was the most handsome guy in all of Israel. But he couldn't obey God. And he took the nation in a wrong direction. And so the prophet comes to Jesse's house. Jesse passes seven sons before the prophet. God tells the prophet, none of these boys I have called. And I have to wonder, what was it like for David? The Bible says that David was out in the field taking care of the sheep. What was it like for him? He didn't even know the prophet was at his house. Hello? Are you awake? What was it like for David? Prophets at his house, all kinds of cool stuff's happening, but he wasn't invited. His own father didn't think enough of him. To invite him, to include him among those that were invited to come and, and meet the prophet. Have you ever felt that way, young person, older person? Have you ever felt like everybody else gets noticed but you? Have you ever felt that on the inside of you, you know that there is something deep on the inside of you. There's something that stirs you. You know that you are called to something higher than what you are seeing take place in your life. But you really can't quite put your finger on it yet. But you, you feel like you have a destiny, but nobody else recognizes it. You're ignored. You're pushed aside. Even those that are called to lead you don't estimate too much about you. But I take heart in this story. Because even though the prophet didn't know who David was, even though his own father wouldn't invite him to the house, it was God Almighty who sent the prophet to his house and said, none of these boys are the one that I've called. There is one. <laughs> Pray, intercessors, help me here. I'm plowing the field. <laughs> you guys are still getting on the bus. Do you know what it's like to be rejected? I do. Have you ever said, man, it ain't fair. I, I didn't ask to be born. 